Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. Now you might notice a change in scenery today, and that's because I'm out here in Copenhagen filming with Unisport Web TV, and I'm joined by a very special guest today. I'm sure you recognize his face, but if for some reason you don't, this is PWG, professional freestyler, also a host here at Unisport, and he's here to help me today with the tutorial. So if you remember a year ago, PWG, we actually filmed an ankle breaker skills video where we went through a few pretty complicated skills, and how were your ankles feeling after that? I'm scarred for life, man. Scarred for life? You can hear the cracks. Ooh, oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Well, you'll be happy to know a year later you've had time to recover. And today we're working on five more 1v1 moves, but they're a lot more simple, but some of the most effective moves I personally know and use in a match. So are you up for the challenge? As long as there's no ankle break guarantee. Okay, I can't guarantee it, but we'll do our best, okay? All right, let's go. All right, let's get into it. All right, PWG, so let's get into the first move here. And this is the area of the pitch I personally like to use it. You can use it in other areas, but for me as a winger, this is how I like to create an opportunity to cross the ball. The first move is called the Stanley Matthews. Do you know who Stanley Matthews is? No, who's that? So he's an English player, actually the oldest player to play at the top level of English football. He played until he was 50 years old. So basically, he made this move famous so they named it after him. And what we're doing here is we're using our body to fake the defender to thinking we're going one way and then exploding in the opposite direction. So when I would be dribbling this way, I'm trying to show the defender, make him think I'm going to my left and then explode to my right and accelerate so that I can get the cross off. So this is the walkthrough of it. So I'm gonna take a touch with the inside of my strong foot here. And then as I take that touch, I step with this leg and I'm really leaning my body to that side. That's gonna make you think that's the way I'm gonna go. And then I'm gonna take another touch in the opposite direction and that's when we accelerate. So this touch is a little bit slower to bait the defender, then this touch is faster and we accelerate immediately. But now I know you have quick feet, Phil. I, I'm kind of drawing some, you know, some comparisons to the Elastico. It's very similar, yes. isn't it? I knew you were gonna say that. So you have quick feet. I know it'd be tempting for you to just do one of these, mm -hmm. like an Elastico movement, but we really wanna sell that first movement. So the first touch, we take it here, we step to the side of the ball, get nice and low, and then we push it away. So let's just paint the picture here. So you're facing me 1v1, I'm dribbling towards you, I'm taking the touch this way, and then explode in the opposite direction. Okay, P-Dub, moving into the second move now. So these are really simple, as we've already said, but once you do simple moves over and over again, it can get a little bit predictable. Mm -hmm. So I've got another one for you now that you can use as an alternate to the Stanley Matthews. I'm gonna call it the fake Stanley Matthews. It's a variation of a body feint that uses the first half of the Stanley Matthews move. So basically what we're gonna be doing is, with the Stanley Matthews, it was obviously a touch here, and then we pushed it off in the opposite mm -hmm. direction, which if I was facing this way, I'm taking it end line. For this one, I'm now cutting it onto my left foot. So I'm gonna cut it back this side. And what we do is, we do the same move. So we touch it inside, step across. And then when we're about to take that outside foot touch, where the defender's gonna think we're gonna explode again, because we've already used Stanley Matthews, we then do a body feint. So we go on to our opposite leg, mm -hmm. get nice and low, and that's where we're gonna throw off the defender a second time. And then we take the ball with the outside of the opposite leg this time, and push it back onto our left side. So here's the difference again, Stanley Matthews, bang. Mm -hmm. And this is the fake Stanley Matthews, here, fake, and go in the opposite direction. Reverse psychology. And then you get on your left foot, and you still have an opportunity to cross or shoot, but you gotta make sure you're strong on both feet so you can have end product at the end of it. Okay, so we're moving into the third move here now, and we've actually come onto the wing. So this is where I would typically use it. It's probably the most effective for wingers, because what we're doing is we're using this move when we have a defender going alongside us. So you've just beaten the fullback, mm -hmm. they're trying to recover, and you want to lose them again. And this is a really good way to lose them in a very simple way. So all we're gonna be doing is using the defender's body, their momentum to go against themselves, make them flat-footed so we can accelerate away. And how we do that is a simple stop and start of the ball. So let's say we're dribbling down together, you're chasing me, and I'm dribbling at full speed. If I stop the ball, what do you have to do? I'll stop as well. Exactly, so when you stop, you're flat-footed for a split second, mm -hmm. and then if that next touch is nice and explosive, you're gonna dictate the play then. So you're gonna be one step ahead, and you're gonna get that one, two second advantage. Mm. So there's three ways I like to do it. One, 
you can dribble and you can use the outside of your foot. It's quite smooth because then you can cut it back and as you're flat footed, I then just take the same foot, use the inside and push it down the line. Second way, you can actually use the sole of your foot if you want. You can use the opposite foot, you can use the same foot. That's just a good way to stop the ball. As we know, when we put our foot on top of the ball, you get a nice purchase of it and you're able to stop it dead. My favorite way is the third variation where we use the inside of both feet. So if we're dribbling down, I cut it back with my left foot and then immediately cut it again with the inside of my right. I like that. For me, that's the smoothest way to do it. And it's very easy to control the ball with the inside of your feet, so it's very effective. So let's just look at this again. We're dribbling down, you stop, and then I accelerate away. Okay, we're gonna move into the fourth 1v1 dribbling move now. One of my favorites, the La Croqueta, made famous by players like Iniesta, Michael Laudrup very good at performing these moves. Really simple and the reason I like it is because you're using the inside of both feet and you have a nice wide surface area, so very easy to control the ball between the two feet. But there's a specific way I like to do this. So a lot of players will tap the ball from one foot to each other and if you're going at speed, that's a quick way to lose control of the ball, especially if you might knock it out to the side, out for a throw in. What I like to do is I push the ball between my feet. So I make contact with the ball, push it across my body, staying in contact with it, then transfer it to the other foot and push it forward. It's a lot tighter control of the ball. Mm. So the way we would use this, I like to use it on the sideline typically, whether it's going towards goal or on the wing, because you can get on the weak side of the defender. So when you're faced one-on-one -on -one with the defender, usually they will jockey, which means go side on. So if you just wanna get that stance for me, and what I mean by weak side is always finding their back. So the weak side is very difficult for them to defend because if I push the ball behind them, they've got to turn a full 180 degrees before they can chase after me. And that gives me the time to get away from them. So if he's got his weak side facing the inside, I'll take the La Croqueta across his body and push, or I might bait the defender. So I might make it look like I'm going to cut inside. That makes them rotate their hips. Then I can take it down the line. But you really want to make that second touch further than the first one. So your first touch across your body, nice and control. Then that second touch, you push it out in front of you further, and then you're already in a position to accelerate away. So the fifth and final move can be used in the middle of the park, so if you're a central midfielder, a center forward, but you can also use it on the wing as well, and this is the fake shot. So we're faking like we're gonna shoot to flat foot the defender, or you can fake like you're gonna cross, fake like you're gonna pass. It is a versatile move that can be used in many areas of the pitch. So the reason this one's so effective is because we're gonna make it look like we're gonna shoot. So I'm gonna push that ball out, and as I'm about to shoot, what's the defend defender gonna do? I'm gonna either jump, try to cover, um, block the ball, basically. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. wanna block the ball, exactly. So to really sell the shot, what we need to do is mimic the shooting technique. So when we're about to shoot, we wanna draw that leg back. You might put that arm out for balance if you really wanna sell it. Make it look like you're about to strike that ball. And as I do that, the defender's gonna go flat foot, they're gonna jump, and then you have a couple of options. There's a couple of variations I like to do. You can A, chop it on their weak side, and then you can get a shot off with your left foot. You can roll it more like a Riyad Mahrez kind of style. So as I fake it, roll it across the body. That's a good way of keeping it closer to the feet, so you still have close control of the ball. Or a third variation, which you can still then shoot with your strong foot, is as I draw my leg back, I then just take another touch in front. And as you can see, now I have the gap to get the shot off. But the most important thing is really selling that you're faking to shoot. That's going to make the defender commit, go flat-footed. Then all you need to do is knock the ball into the space that they're not occupying. All right, guys, so those are the five skills I've got for you today. Some of the most simple skills that even probably PWG could master. We know he's not the most skillful player, but we tried to make it simple for him. So if he can master them, you guys can as well with a little bit of practice. Has anyone seen PWG, by the way? Oh, there he is. Are you right? How are your ankles? Still so-so, man. Yeah, that was so tough. That was tough. I was just saying to these guys that even you could probably master some of these skills. What do you think? I mean, I'm not the skilly skill type of guy on the, on the field, to be honest, so uh, I don't know. Hey, I don't want Nothing. you to doubt yourself, man. Really believe in yourself. I think with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to get these, okay? And if you need me to teach you more, just 
Let me know I, anytime. I really, really appreciate the support, man. I'm happy to help you out, man. But thanks so much for joining me today, man. And guys, thank you guys for watching as well. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you drop a like. Also, make sure you check out Unisports channel by clicking the bubble that's up here somewhere. Subscribe to them. You can check out more moves from Phil and plenty more tutorials on their channel. But as always, hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos, and I will see you guys in the next video.